uh, coming off of that loss. And we'll see uh, Habana, pretty standard ban though. You gotta ban a hard breacher on bank, right? TSM is starting on attack, so they don't get the benefit of that. FaZe, obviously on defense, they know they don't wanna be playing a bank matchup with all three on the board, right? And every time we see FaZe Clan, you know, play bank, what do they employ? A Monte. Yuna's on the Monty almost every single time. FaZe like to take out the other wall inside of CCTD, the other server wall by the server rack, and then play behind that, and then try to bait out as much utility as they can, try to juggle with the smoke grenades, C4s, etc. Banning Monty, I'm assuming FaZe Clan have a strategy set up not involving Montane, but that's a really important weapon that's been removed from the arsenal of FaZe. Yeah. The Montang ban normally when we see this come out is a counter ban for the other team. It's you're not just gonna ban Montang just to ban Montang. TSM has information about FaZe Clan on bank, and they know that that Montang just is able to gather um, quick map control, and it's kind of a crutch. So if you eliminate that sh that shield, they now have to kind of come, you know, bring to the table a different strategy on attack. Uh, and it will slow down FaZe for sure. With Montang, you can do things a lot quicker. Yeah. FaZe, when they play bank more often than not, at least through the previous season, it was a Hibana Echo ban. Almost every single time FaZe played this map, right? And I mean, like we said, once again, a Latin America team is playing. Let's make reference to the fact that Thatcher is the most banned attacker in Latin Jack, America. They don't like spot. playing around him. Thatcher is not that powerful an operator in regards to other ops that you can take off the board. A Maverick, a Habana, possibly a Jackal if you want to remove from the equation. A Capital, who, funny enough, Capital has not been changed, but he hasn't been run once between these teams. And I suspect, I don't know if you'd agree with me, it's because when you're playing on Consulate, the role that Capital would fulfill, you either had the IQ playing it to do gadget, you know, identification, retrieval, etc., or more importantly, it was the role that Gridlock was playing. Yeah, Capitao is very powerful. He's able to flush out defenders that are sitting in very hard to reach places. Um, but at the end of the day, it definitely is a preference. And I, they don't have any smokes at all. So not only are they not bringing Capitao to, to flush those defenders out, but they don't have smokes. So that means TSM has to bring a different strategy to the table. Capitao can be powerful on bank but let's see how they're gonna utilize this no smoke lineup because it's really hard to bait out C4 without smokes. Um, but let's see, let's see how they do it. Yeah, this is gonna be interesting from TSM. I wonder if we're gonna actually see a server take at all. Possibly take servers, push in through lockers, hold them out, and then just try and control red from garage? Maybe, but I mean, you're gonna have to figure out that there's a Valkyrie camera inside a garage. A lot of teams will run a Maestro cam inside a garage as well with Maestro or Kaid playing that far back. In this case, there will be the Maestro actually situated in Garage right now, holding the hard angle. And you'll also have the benefit of the default cam at the bottom of the driveway that actually goes into the Garage. The moment that default cam gets shot, you know somebody's probably advancing on that position. You got the Valkyrie camera for insurance if need be. Yeah, pretty standard hold coming from FaZe. We've got two playing server, one playing Garage, uh, cameraman watching the staircase, and then Ion playing the red hallway. So nothing crazy here from, from FaZe Clan. They, they don't, they're not roaming. So really, it just comes down to TSM applying that checklist, gaining that control, gaining blue stairs, and then going for going for the plant. So pretty standard bank, nothing crazy. It really just comes down to how quickly TSM takes that control and starts getting rid of that utility. Yeah, I'm very curious to see how TSM is going to flush out their defenders as well. You've only got one set of frag grenades, and with the exception of Zofia, you really don't have a lot of opportunities to dig out the players from FaZe Clan who are going to be sitting really pretty inside of a bomb site that you can fit all five bodies on quite comfortably, very similar to the basement of Clubhouse. You know, these two sites have that distinction is where you can sit everybody inside of it. Bank is such a big map. You've also got CEO upstairs where all five defenders can play there too. Oh, Achieved almost losing his life to the MPX in the hands of Cameraman as the Valkyrie swings on Achieved. Both frag grenades from the sledge are gone, so that's another piece of the puzzle for TSM that they'll have to find elsewhere. Bolo on his own. He's trying to engage with Astro, but he's losing that fight, and TSM is just taking a beating so far. Cameraman falls off very wisely. And with the, I guess, benefit of a solid surface, he'll go back on his camera. He swings out, and that's three in a row for FaZe. TSM started off map number one with the flawless round, and we are so close to seeing the same from FaZe. 
30 seconds left. Jarvis on drone duty, trying to guide Merc on in. Diffuser is not in the hands of either member of TSM, so you're just gonna have to go for kills at this point. It's impossible to see how TSM would be able to retrieve the Diffuser. But a rotate is going to cost them. Bank being so big means it's gonna take you a while to get from one end to the other. Trying to find a fruitless kill here now as TSM will just twist in the wind. Flawless round coming up. No, Jarvis will stop it, but Yuna will stop Jarvis. And also Merc and FaZe Clan will take round number one of Bank. Yep, nothing crazy coming from FaZe. Pretty standard play on Bank, but they played it well. They won their gunfights, and that's all that really matters on this bomb site. You're hoping to win those ones, and it looked, from what we saw, that it was a lot of individual 1v1 kills, and that's all you need to win the downstairs basement defense on this map. I mean, FaZe Clan have to rack up wins on defense. Number one, Bank is a pretty balanced map uh, overall. I would actually have to see the stats from the Raleigh Major on. I actually haven't seen them. I, I, don't I know would say it's pretty balanced. It's pretty balanced. At one point in time, Bank was the most balanced map. It was like 48, 52% or something along those lines. A very balanced map, and I think a lot of it is because there's there's strengths and weaknesses to every single site, and there's a lot of ways, Absolutely. with the exception of really the basement, there are a lot of ways you can play the other three sites, even though open area doesn't see an awful lot of play itself. In this case, you've got CEO office upstairs, which is where we are for round number two. It also has a lot of variations. You can play down below with one or two C4 in hand. You can have a deep late roam down in the basement. We've seen teams run CAV on this site. Usually want to have an ACOG or two playing as well into lobby or possibly holding down vending machines over towards Skylight Stairwell. There's yeah. a lot of flexibility here. And when you look at the setup that FaZe Clan has, I imagine we're going to see, as you said in the last round, very standard stuff from them. Yeah, Bank is just one of those maps that's been in the game for so long. Everyone knows how to play the map. It's just up to the team, the direction they want to go to attacking some of these sites, to defending some of these sites. But at the end, like at the end, there's not really much changing on these defense defensive holds. And same thing with the attacks as well. The attacks are pretty standard attacks. The key for for this site specifically is that window control. Can they gain the window control? Can they gain the the main lobby control without anybody jumping out of the windows or peeking them from the windows? That's really the difficult part for the defenders and the attackers. It's not easy on both sides, and it really comes down to a 50-50 who wins their gunfight at the end of the day. And I was going to say, I got cooked because Kix and I used to say standard a lot. And then people would say, well, what is standard? What's the standard? What is standard? And that's a very good question, and it's one that is a, a learning process for us to try and give that information to newer viewers. But here, when you're on CEO, standard, usually have one ACOG up top by the spiral stairs watching those windows, as you said, window control. Usually have somebody just a little bit farther behind, maybe a secondary ACOG, maybe somebody who's just got utility, maybe sitting with an ADS. In this case, there's no Jaeger on the board, so that's not a thing. You've got Castle barricades likely helping them and then you've got a second body playing inside a banana which is the office then you've got two bodies inside of the actual site and then you might have somebody playing an elevator watching this you know the spiral stairs alongside the ACOG that's what we mean when we say standard yeah and we have a we have a hold down here in archives tellers coming from phase uh cameraman loses the gunfight Merc with the trade as well but we still have a C4 op down below, and that's the whole reason TSM is pushing that out. They got to make sure the Valk is not down below or they can't go for the plant. So clearing out that Valk is key for uh, TSM, and let's, uh, let's see if they can do it. Yeah, so this is not actually as standard as we would have thought because you have two people from FaZe on that main floor. Correct. That's not really that standard for CEO. It is on a retake or a plant denial strat, but a lot of teams don't run that so aggressively. It's something that Fnatic has done before where they'll always keep somebody on the main floor. In this case, you've got a great tool at your disposal to try and find them. It happens to be a Jackal, and this is going to be painful for FaZe Clan as it's the Valkyrie of Mav now under watch from Jarvis. So I like the rotate here coming from FaZe. Mav actually decided uh, to drop down below into, I think, the bank vault. Poja Man with the trade onto Ion, but I expect Mav to rotate at some point, maybe back into Tellers to get that C4 kill or to gain that stairs control. This is all falling in favor now as there's Astro just, just laying waste to every member of TSM. And now the worst spot to find yourself on, which is Repel as you swing on in. But Achieved is going to be able to get in the blindness right now. But he's going to have to go against Astro and it is just in so much trouble. That is not a fun spot to be in at all. He gets gassed to death by the smoke. And that's it for the sledge. He'll take a seat. That's what I'm talking about with the roamers on wasting time. Mav knew he was in a pickle and he had to get out. He rotated, he dropped the hatch and wasted time. Jarvis didn't even know that, that, that he had left. And it 
burn so much time for TSM that they were forced to scramble. And uh, I think it was Astro playing, uh, playing at the top of the stairs, just kind of picking them off one by one. Yeah, Astro is playing at the top of spiral stairs, as we said. You're usually going to have an ACOG in that position. It might be a dock. Uh, we've seen G2 run an Echo there, even though that's a huge gamble on those Yokai drones. You've got a Maestro in this case, because even if he dies, your cams are still going to have coverage. And a lot of teams are not using those Maestro cams for plant denial on a map like Bank. We've seen it before, but it doesn't always happen. In this case, Attack it's two in a row for FaZe, and TSM's good coordination on Consulate has evaporated. This is TSM's map, and they have looked so less sure-footed than they did previously. When you're attacking Bank, you really just have to be on point. All of your players have to be in sync with each other. I think Bank is one of those maps where your team just has to have a lot of chemistry because it's very simple stuff, but you have to be on, you have to be on your game to make sure you're not making those small mistakes droning everybody out. Losing that engagement Ten down below in Archive Tellers definitely set the momentum for FaZe. And starting on attack first, to TSM is going to need a few more rounds or FaZe is going to really build up that momentum going into the attacking the rounds. Yeah. And as we said, with FaZe being an emotional team, momentum is very important. TSM is the same. But FaZe are able to block out that first map and just keep it rolling with this one. And you can see that they don't look particularly upset. And, I mean, as much as we don't want to necessarily read into the facial expressions and uh, body language, I would say that FaZe are not distressed at this point. And they've built themselves a pretty decent nest egg. Two rounds so far on defense. That's, you know, bank playing out like that. It's a balanced map. If you're walking away with a 3-3 split, that's pretty normal. But TSM will at some point have to find some mojo. I would imagine that they'll probably take a tactical timeout if this round or the next round doesn't fall in their favor, because then you're going to be gassed and you're going to end up swapping sides. And unless you hope to ride the wave of maybe this map is more defender-sided because of the operator bands right now, you end up with just such a big hole, not just in terms of score, but also mentally to be able to come back. So, phase. Uh, holding Kitchen this time. I really like this bomb site actually. A lot of teams not as favorable for this bomb site, but really a big fan. TSM doing a uh, top down clear. They're going to get full top control. Once they have that top control, they can open up these hatches. Once they open up the hatches, they're going to go for a, bo a bomb plant either by jumping in the window or they're going to probably drop the hatch. But they don't have smokes. Normally when you go for this plant, you want to have smokes to cover that bomb plant. But before they do that, they've got to make sure no one, nobody's in archive tellers holding those angles. So they got to clear out these bomb guys first. We've got that second floor control that they want. Open area is a very interesting choice to go with here, especially given that Mira is banned. And the very first pick, it comes with a minute and 18 left in the round. It's Bolo finding Yuna. And the mute is down. Yuna obviously playing the role that is so important in the latter half of a round that's going to be difficult without him. And that's a C4 gone too. Depending on what Mav has done with his, that might be this, all the C4s off the board. Uh, that was a scarily close uh, engagement there between Bolo and Astro, but neither take any damage. So I don't know if it was just missed opportunities or what. Regardless of the, a man being down, notice the control that TSM has right here. This is They've got the hallway angle being locked down. Bolo is playing inside of Tellers. I mean, FaZe can't rotate, and to be able to win this site, you have to regain a little bit of that control, or then it's all over for you. Bolo with the trade onto Cameraman. Now, they're looking good. All they gotta do at this point is just go for a plant. Nobody really needs to make any flashy plays. Play disciplined, go for the plant, uh, and there's not a lot of time left, so they gotta start moving now. And Mav is out of his C4, so he can't play below, but TSM, all very low on HP, so it doesn't matter what gun you have, you'll be able to shred through them pretty quickly. But it doesn't help if you're not looking in the right direction. They'll stop the bleeding. Through two rounds, phase was perfect, but not this time. TSM puts one on the board, and it takes a pretty unconventional site to do it. Again, notice TSM with the first opening kill. It's, it's key. It's absolutely important. And it, uh, the stat is just is so impactful on the team and the rounds. It, it's not a coincidence. The second a player goes down, it's incredibly hard to crawl back. And when teams crawl back, losing a man first, it's really, really impressive. But in this matchup, most of the time we've seen the team that has lost a man first lose the round. I think the Siege GG stat is something like 80 some odd percent. If yeah. you lose, you know, the first pick, it's 80% likelihood that you lose the round. And that's 
that's hard. And and I, like I said, we hearken back to that very Attack first map where we said, yeah, well, it's simply because can. of the fact that you have everybody else now have to shoulder one fifth of the weight, depending on what's on the board for defenders. You might now be down a lot of drones and a lot of information that works out quite handily. And even as routine as you might see some defenses, as we say, uh, a very typical defense. As in this case, I imagine we'll see a very typical defense from the face clan here, given the lineup. You still need to figure out where exactly everybody is because the small micro adjustments make a big difference. In this case, the typical way to play the site involving a pulse, Mr. Redeemer. Please tell us. Yeah, pulse is just going to sit back um, in the in the vault area and just kind of scan server. It's going to let them know when they need to start using their utility to stop the bomb plant. Phase Clan won this bomb site last time. I don't see them changing anything up in terms of strategy. TSM is the one that's got to adapt here. This is a side note. I really appreciate the respect and friendship that we have in this community between certain players. And Mav and Canadian are exceptionally close. I know a lot of people might not know this. Canadian loves bananas. Mav runs a banana on his Pulse. Why? Because Pulse is Canadian, one of Canadian's favorite operators. So you run Canadian's old org, EG, and then the banana on it. It's just, it's nice to Beautiful. see that. It's nice to see, like, the friendship come forward. Because if anybody knows Canadian, they know how much he loves bananas. Not only does he play bananas sometimes, but he also will routinely tweet out pictures of bananas before his match. And if so. you don't like bananas, there's there there's might some, be some, something, something wrong something with might you. Be wrong with something yeah. might be wrong with Just you. Just go to the so. doctor, get it checked. Yeah, go go to the bananaologist <laughs> and figure that one out. Also, by the way, not to take away from this matchup, but do bear in mind that there are other matches all being played right now in a variety of different community caster channels, including the G2 Liquid matchup. I believe that's on Zig's channel. Space Station Rec is on Stoke's channel. I really channel. want to know what's happening. Uh, G2 took map one. Did spoilers. they? Yes, okay, they good did. to know. So I will, I will spoil some of these things for you when we have it, but... Here's what we have, a wonderful juggle onto the server stairs. This is very commonplace. So what happens? You put one to two people, likely with a shotgun, playing over at the top of server stairs. It could be a mute, it could be a smoke. Oh, that's Who knows? Be huge, that's huge hit. That's a dinger. That's a that's a bad one. Achieved is down sloppiness from TSM, and they are having such a bad time to try and dislodge Yuna. Who's gonna go for broke? Oh, oh and he catches them both! Oh, Mav is credited with one, but what a play from FaZe to shut it down. That's a glorified 3K because of the team kill for FaZe and TSM are all but lost. There's a lot of time left, but FaZe Clan may just delay the inevitable here. Bolo here is what appears to be the sound of a C4 rip. He doesn't know how to play this at all. He's still got full utility. He could possibly use a lifeline down below. He's nowhere near his teammates. Jarvis gets the flash off successfully. I don't think he's aware of this. He cannot connect. There he goes. Lots of damage, but he hits the floor. Jarvis oh. with two. He brings this one ever closer. A single kill from Bolo onto those stairs. Could put this round back in play for TSM. But there's a sense of urgency now. 40 seconds. It's going to be a scramble here for TSM. Not a lot of time on the board. They are a man down. At this point, you're kind of shooting in the dark. You're, you're having to just make a quick call and hope that it works out. Uh, and Face Clan still has seat fours on the board with that utility with the cameras. Jarvis has the diffuser in hand as well. So there's a possible for a plant here if required. But FaZe are going to retake. They'll go back up top and Jarvis walks right on in. There's no way for him to go through. It's all on the shoulders of Bolo. He's got one. Oh, he can't get two. Oh, he thought he got eye on, so but no. Close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades and FaZe will take CCTV, the basement site, for the second time in a row. They're up 3-1. Yeah, let's go back to the server stairs. That's kind of where TSM lost the round. Every map kind of has a similar room like the projector from Consulate. It's very difficult to take control. And if you put a shotgun on the staircase, you can't just run into the doorway. And that's exactly what TSM had to do. They just threw their stuns and hoped that they won their gunfights. But when you're going up against a shotgun, sitting that close, that's what's going to happen to you. Additionally, bad operator placement. Who is one of the best operators at being able to push somebody out of those server stairs that That's, is run by TSM every time? That Are you talking about the sludge with the grenades? No, I'm talking about Zofia. Oh, to be able to stun on the staircase and then and then push in? Flash, flash in, exactly. use your lifeline twice, and have somebody push on in. And where was Bolo? Bolo was on main stairs. Well, and main the, stairs. And the thing, too, is uh, the sledge, who can also, after you stun with the Zofia stuns, throw a grenade and eliminate them that way. Um, or if they're at the bottom of the staircase, cook the grenade and throw it at the bottom of the staircase. Losing a Chief super early on, I, I agree with you. I, I think it kind of was the wrong uh, wrong play, and the operators and where they're sitting at you know, maybe could be 
you know, messed with just a little bit, tinkered with. 40 seconds left, Bolo is still alive. He's got all of his utility. He hasn't utilized any of it to possibly help his team on server stairs. Also, the server hatch was still closed. Whose job is that? Likely Jarvis on Maverick. So you've got two people stacked up in server stairs. What do you do? Well, you've got a sledge, you've got a Zofia, you've got a Thermite, you've got a Maverick. Open up that server hatch. Make so that nobody can come down the bottom of server stairs to rotate out. It's essentially a very long staircase to heaven. Yeah. And at that point, you have frag grenades, you got stuns, you can have somebody play from the hatch above, but none of those steps were taken by TSM, and it cost them. That was a very poor, uh, I would say, management of the way that they had their operator. Yeah, if anybody's going to do it, it probably should be Merc. He's on the IQ. He doesn't really have any use until uh, once they really gain that control down below. They're only the looking for Valt cameras. Located. I would have put Merc on, this, Merc on the staircase, watch the rotate until they gain that blue stairs control. But I know Merc is a gunner. You want him at the forefront of your, of your push. But right there, the operators that they had used to take control of that did not seem to fit. I mean, maybe there was something they had in mind with the Chief too, right? But he got team killed right off the hop. And that, that is true. I actually, that is did not, problem. I actually did not think about that. that. That's probably why it was so difficult for them to take the staircase in the first place. That makes a lot of sense. I don't think he'd thrown a single frag grenade out, but it didn't really matter because you also had FaZe taking the ADS off the wall and putting it back on to try and outlast the EMPs. They did so very successfully. So that round in the books, we transition towards round number five. We are a minute and 10 seconds in, nearing the halfway point. And it's a 3-1 lead for FaZe Clan. It's a CEO defense as well. And FaZe have changed up an awful lot. But there's some air mail for Yuna. And he will be the intended receiver. No flag on the play. That's perfect. Chief finally getting a little bit of revenge on uh, onto Yuna with that grenade. Ion picks off Achieved. Evens the round up, but still not over over for uh, TSM. TSM's in the sword. site right now, and they'll miss their shots. Yeah, They're very wary of the C4 down below. I don't know where Mav is. This is difficult, but TSM could be attempting a plant. They have way more control than they thought, and they're just feeding themselves to phase at this point. Very near a flawless round, were it not for Achieve's efforts at the start. TSM are in trouble at the moment. They are a ship right now crashing against the rocks as... They had the full site control, and they didn't know it. Yeah, I think there was a little bit too, like it was too much of an aggressive play coming from TSM. They were in sight, and they could have planted. They could have kind of stopped there, but instead they chose, hey, let's flood all the way through. And that, to me, is kind of where they they messed up and not they they did a little bit too much. And when you go for those those picks, you go for those those plays. You know, it's it's going to be 50-50. You're either going to kill everybody or you're going to lose the round, but they didn't need to do that. They had the, the control, um, and it wasn't full control, but just a little control is all you need to get the bomb plant down. But once you make that call to go for those picks, it's either going really well or you're falling down quick. Yeah, and that was very quick. It's one of those few sites where it's like when things go bad, they go bad bomb. real fast. Yeah. Right? So open area didn't work, so what does FaZe Clan do? Well, they decide to go towards Teller's Archives. A smart move, I would say. It's a site that for a long period of time was the second most reliable on bank. It's fallen out of favor because CEO now has uh, more opportunities due to one operator in particular, and that's, I think, Maestro making CEO a lot more tenable. Number one, you bring the ACOG, which you need. Number two, you could shoot out the walls with a secondary sidearm. You got the evil eye cams as well. Good coverage from Maestro to be able to make that site playable for the defenders. Very similar to the way that Mira made uh, customs playable on border for a period of time prior to her being banned in every single match under the sun. So this is the very final defense for FaZe Clan. And remember when we said that Bank was a balanced match or a, ba a balanced map? And then you look at the score and you kind of laugh to yourself. Yeah, FaZe Clan looks like they're kind of over with losing. Uh, they had a, a rough run on on the last map, but they're bringing it here. They're bringing it here on Bank. FaZe Clan switching up the bomb site though. The only bomb site they lost was Kitchen, and now they uh, they're going back to, to Archive Tellers. I like the switch up. Uh, and if they gain this round here, I think they're might, probably going to run with it on this map, and we're going to see a third map. Yeah, TSM really need to, I, I'm surprised, haven't taken a tactical timeout. I get why, though. The likelihood is because they know they're going to switch. If things go badly for them on defense, well, then you might see the tactical timeout come. Well, and speaking of uh, IGLing, or going back to the talk of IGLing, losing an IGL and coming to bank, you have to be so coordinated on this map and picking up Jarvis 
who is also he's a support player and he's been, he knows how to play the map, but just coming to a new team is it can be a lot and you, it's hard to go over every single map and make it perfect. And the fact that he came back so recently and they're having to play every you know have a expand their map pool at least come into bank maybe they're not as fluid on this map and it shows on attack right and if you want to like a little bit of juxtaposition here uh, on consulate it was tsm calling a great match and phase committing a lot of mistakes and looking lost in this case i think phases look okay on bank but what's been more glaringly obvious are the mistakes that tsm are making and you see Yuna on a very routine entry for a sledge or a buck upstairs, taking out those floorboards, and you're all gone. Completely gone. Now, this was a fight that Careman didn't need to take by any stretch of the imagination. Absolutely. Especially as a castle. You're not going to be engaging anybody in lobby. What are you doing with the UMP in your hands? There's a second C4 kill from FaZe. So their explosives right now are two for two. They might still have another in the hands of Yuna or Astro, depending on whoever has one left. No, it's Mav who actually has it left. My apologies. Hard to keep track when you've got three C4 operators on the board. But Bolo finds kill number two. He's right at the teller's doorway. Pocho's in, and Bolo gets to kill number three. He's got Merc watching. Ion picks off Merc inside open area, and Bolo's going to have to watch a lot of angles. This prompts Pocho to get off of his plant. He realizes that he doesn't have the safety nor security that he needs. Astro's creeping on up, and Bolo might be wise to his tricks. The Doc and Pojo will engage. Astro takes down Bolo, and this looks like unless Pojo can pull off a miracle. That's uh, going to go in favor of FaZe. One HP, end a dream, they call it. And it's Ion to make the dream a nightmare for TSM. FaZe walking away 5-1 with their defense. My oh my, that is a good result to have here on TSM's map. Yeah, FaZe is looking really good right now. But back to what you said about Cameraman over peaking, they almost threw that round because he was not the only one that was peaking. A lot of the players from FaZe started to get really aggressive and it could have gone bad for them if, if they had won a few or if they had lost a few gunfights. But I really like the strategy coming from FaZe Clan, stacking those C4s, getting those early picks. And then I think that's maybe the reason why they started getting aggressive. They got the two C4 kills. They said, let's finish this round. And that's where you need to be able to kind of bring it back and just finish the round out, play a little bit smarter. But the fact FaZe Clan was able to finish it off, uh, good for them. And they're looking clean on bank. Also possible the cameraman just got caught in a bad rotation or was Very he just true. going to scope out lobby itself, whether he thought he was going to win the fight or not. I, I mean, I'm not entirely sure. Attackers but, need to locate um, and defuse Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of question marks there, but ultimately in the grand scheme of things, that cameraman depth is really not that important. It could have snowballed. Yeah, oh, first. no, absolutely not. And he knew that. Yeah. That's why he kind of took that engagement. Or like you said, he could have gotten caught off on a rotation. Regardless, though, those are the things that, um, as like a person that's spectating the game, just recognizing what's needed, what's not needed. And even if cameraman's was like, a, like you said, caught on rotation, the other players kind of got a little bit aggressive. And I think when you're up an advantage, and these guys are have a massive lead right now, that's really when you start making those aggressive plays. So that's when you make the aggressive plays when you're down, it doesn't hurt you as much. But when you really have a lead, that's when you uh, that's when it's that's when you start see, seeing a lot of people coming out with those peaks and getting really, really aggressive. All right, we side swap now, and TSM bringing. Uh, an interesting pick. A castle here. Interestingly enough, uh, a castle on a basement defense is not that usual. I, I, you can see right now that's being used very selfishly by Bolo on that main floor. And when I say selfishly, I don't mean in a bad way. I mean he's literally using it to create a safety zone or a, a panic room upstairs. And because he's got those castle barricades in place, he's going to be able to waste as much time and resources from FaZe Clan. They have a Zofia, which is going to be eh, probably your best tool to be able to take those castle barricades out. This is actually an APAC strategy that we've seen a couple times. Yeah, this strategy that we see coming out from TSM, when Merc was in Challenger League, his yeah. team did this strat. It can pay off, but it also can be very, very risky because you want the attackers to come to you. And when you play like this, and you and lose a roamer like Bolo super early on, the defenders have no chance if they clear these guys out. Yeah. And that's the big problem, too. Like like we've said many times, is it's like if you invest so heavily offsite or something like that and they find a way around it, then you're in so much trouble because you've just wasted 
all of the benefits of having a castle or even another operator. You know, you could run a Kaid here if you really wanted to. There's there's lots of things that TSM could have played instead of the castle. And yeah, when I said it's an Apex strat, I think it was Nora Rengo that we saw do it a number of times. Uh, and I think we saw Cyclops do it as well in the Raleigh Major, where it's just like you try to hold that second and third floor. So it doesn't work out at all in this case. Bolo was a very early casualty. And I mean, what do we say about the teams that lose a body early? In this particular uh, matchup, it's spelled doom for you and the rest of your team. The good news is that now FaZe are going to have to confront Pojo, or the good news, if you're TSM, rather, will have to confront Pojo on the server stairs. He's going to sit there for the time being and just wait ever so patiently. And FaZe have done something that TSM struggled to do, open up that server hatch. Yeah, and this is really the key for taking server. You don't generally want to even come down the staircase until you have that, that hatch open. So once you get open up that hatch, it allows you to start burning ADSs. It cuts off the rotate for the smoke player playing on staircase. And they have to start getting aggressive now or FaZe is just going to be able to, to completely clear them out. If this is a good call from FaZe here, Merc is all but certainly dead. And Pojo Man might be as well. But Merc will find some shelter just behind the server rack as now the bodies from FaZe come storming down the stairs. Merc takes one down. He's got a couple more lined up, possibly waiting to push. And Merc gets one, but he runs for the dirt tunnel, the escape hatch. Do they know where he is? He'll be detected. He's just wasting time. FaZe Clan are stalling out immensely. A C4 from Achieved goes out, will it connect? There it goes, but no, he misses it. He'll have to take out the Maverick the old fashioned way with gun in hand, but Jarvis is there and it's a team effort as all three members of TSM left alive somehow managed to eat FaZe's lunch on that one. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how they were able to bring that back. They should have lost that round. TSM's got to be feeling good after that round. I mean, it was it was FaZe Clan's round, and that was a throw, if I've ever seen one. I would be inclined to agree. I don't like to use the throw word. But yes, I would it, say is, that. it is I would a, say, it is I a very was a toxic yes, it was, word. Toxic casters. I'm sorry. Uh, it's It's okay. But you just got to feel for FaZe. I mean, when you, you're that close to the round and you can feel it, they felt it there and it just kind of dropped the ball. Those are the rounds that really kind of, if you're an emotional team, send you spiraling in the wrong direction. Yeah. Still no timeouts being taken from either team. So obviously TSM and Gotcha in particular is likely just going to wait until it goes to match point. I, I think that's... I think that's sensible. I mean, you want to test the waters here, right? You want to make sure that it wasn't just that, oh, the defense are going to win all the time. Now, it's a very tall order for TSM, who will have to win five of their six defenses, which is very uncommon. Very uncommon. Doable. And if you're an emotional team, winning that round, you got to take it round by round. And then the second you you tie it up, you know, that's when, that's when you can really start kind of focusing and, and pulling the round through. But TSM really has to... Has to they got to crawl out of this hole that they're in. Yeah. And they're starting. I mean, you got to crawl before you can walk in this particular instance. Then you want to run away with it. If you want to get all the motions. Yeah. Play some crawl, Absolutely. walk, run, speed talk, maybe. <laughs> well, Achieve. Bringing out the Valk. I really like this call. He's uh, going to be able to apply a lot of, uti or, uh, yeah, a lot of utility and information uh, to the board. It'll allow him to make some of those aggressive plays. It also might. It also looks like he's waiting for any somebody to enter into top stock and catch them off guard with a C4 possibly, uh, and then also having that C4 player play down below uh, to stop bomb plants is, is really key. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, is it Maverick all by himself out on the balcony on drones, running himself in and nobody else. Phase are very spread out and. I mean, this is a very risky spot for cameraman to be in. I mean, you saw him shoot the windows out on the trading room, I guess, or the reinforcements out on the trading room windows, and <laughs> it's very easy for you to get picked there if he's not watching. He's got Mav just within arm's reach, but he's on the wrong floor. FaZe are, what, they've taken a minute of time, and they don't really seem to be very sure of anything at the moment. Yeah, it looks like FaZe might be thinking about clearing out the roamers that, that are playing down below and to stop anybody that's that's making those aggressive plays. But Mav with the kill on the Merc, that's huge. That's one of the roamers. That's one of their fraggers on, off the board. Now uh, FaZe Clan can kind of move and, and, and shuffle around the map and not have to worry about one of those players. Smart play by Mav as well. He knew somebody was in that area. He kept shooting at the door and then peeling off to try and draw Merc out, and he did exactly that. Merc took the bait, hook, line, and sinker, and 
You know, Mav is a very intelligent player. That's the kind of play that you need. And you need a couple more of those. So first pick goes in favor of FaZe Clan. And now we have it. Pojo getting stunned on window on Repel. He can be spotted here. He's a sitting duck. That's an easy cleanup for Astro. FaZe now, the ball is rolling down the hill. You're going to need quite the effort to stop it from TSM. One of these players from TSM has to make an aggressive play. That's what we see coming out from Bolo. You got to get him off the windows if you want to have a chance to salvage this round. The problem is, is FaZe is covering Lobby, there goes Achieved. It's not looking good for Bolo and Jarvis. This round could be over for TSM. Cameraman goes barreling on in towards the site. Jarvis finds him, doesn't know that the plan is going down, and Yuna doesn't need to fall off at any point in time. A lot of stuff and debris flying up around him, but he's undeterred. It's Jarvis nailing a couple shots onto Yuna, doing a bit of damage, but there's so many members from FaZe left. This is a heady task for TSM. Or a heady tail, dare I say. Jarvis, gun down from the windows. Bolo on the retake. He's still got a stim pistol left. But in a 1v4, it doesn't matter if you've got Bolo aim or Bolo flicks here. It's almost certainly match point. And he'll count his lucky stars. He's not dead just yet. He's inside a janitor. And well, it's FaZe actually who are doing the cleanup. Oh. What a shot onto Yuna. But the time is so low. Even if he's able to find them, there's a lot of control for FaZe here. And that's the worry. Go for the kills, Bolo. You might as well. You're not going to be able to grab that diffuser. You had time, but it's match point for FaZe. Wow. Attacker mission success. I don't want to say it, but I think this map might be over with. FaZe Clan just has a lot of momentum here. And if you're going into the third map, you kind of want to be the team that wins the second map because you, they come off of this win on bank, and they're excited, and they go into the third map. Versus TSM, they had the first map win, and now, now they're not looking that good. Unsurprising that TSM will take a tactical timeout here. Yeah, now's the time to do it. Yeah, now's the time to do it, yeah. and it makes sense. Uh, what what more can you really change? In my opinion, I, I think just Phase has a lot of momentum, and I, I don't think TSM can stop them. Not on bank, and the, it showed the uh, the weakness of TSM on the attack, at least for for this map. And it's. Uh, I, uh, I, I don't think there's much they can do. I think FaZe is about to close this, close this out. They're just, they're looking so good. I mean, I, it, it's funny because a lot of people don't want us focusing on one team or the other, but I think TSM has really been the story of this match. Why? Because map number one, we said they called an almost perfect game against FaZe. Yeah. They seem to beat FaZe every step of the way. FaZe looked unlucky and they didn't look that great, but overall that was a TSM triumph more than a phase failure. With this map though, TSM has been missing their shots. In addition to the strategy behind it, in addition to the fact that TSM don't look as practiced or as poised, their calling hasn't been great, their decision making hasn't been great, but ultimately TSM have been missing shots too. Yeah. FaZe have not. And you're absolutely right. You want to be the team taking map two emerging as the victor and then heading into map three with the wind at your sails and in this case it's clubhouse a clubhouse is a map that na plays an awful lot but yeah phase i think they have the advantage don't they they i mean they may but i mean phase toppled one of the best teams on clubhouse 7-1 yeah if i'm uh if if i'm tsm let's try to get a few more rounds so that we get the we get the side choice once we go to clubhouse Clubhouse being a defender-sided map, I know there's been some debates of people saying that it, it, you could argue maybe maybe attack is it's defender-sided. It's it's mostly defender-sided. Um, you know, some teams prefer attack and they just they're really good at it, but it's defender-sided for the most part. And I would not be surprised if Phase takes defense. They're going to take defense if they close this out right here. Yeah. So we'll wait and see. But. Overall, I expected this to go to three maps. Finally, we have a best of three that actually utilizes map number three. I feel like we've been drowning in a sea of best of three. A lot two. of 2-0s. Yeah, and it's... Even at even at the major, there was a yeah, lot major of... Major was like all 2 -0s. Yeah. It was it was very surprising. You guys were done by like four or something, or like it's super early. Yeah, man, I was eating... Days. I had so much time, I could have dinner twice. Really? Well, I mean, I didn't, but I could have. You could, you should, well, you I should have. I should have. Yeah. I should have. Yeah. Tw dinner twice. Isn't that like a Midwest thing? It's like supper and then dinner. It's yeah. Like supper's like after lunch. I had a free few friends that, that they called it supper. Yeah. yeah it didn't I mean, sit well with me. But no, uh, you know what? I'm I'm it, an, I'm an anti supper. I, yeah, I, I, I'm totally anti against supper. Yeah. I'm a no sup at all. <laughs> Not even. Don't. I don't even. I don't even say the word sup to say hi to people. Yeah. I say I say what's up, like a normal human.
It's obnoxious. It is. I mean, <laughs> that, is, <laughs> that is a word for it. <laughs> and obnoxious has been the play style of FaZe so far, being able to hit their shots. And they have been obnoxiously good, I would say, so far yeah. in terms of accuracy. Like I said, I don't want to I don't want to bag on them too much because it's like the strategy behind what FaZe has done has been good, but it hasn't been great. And I think against a team that looks better than TSM, then this would be a much closer match yeah. so far. Yeah, absolutely. And, and TSM, you're saying we don't want to keep focusing on them, but they really are the underdogs. FaZe, they haven't won a bunch of events, but they're consistent. They've been around the block for a minute, uh, and they're just really well known in the scene. TSM, on the other hand, a lot of doubt with the roster, a lot of, you know, question marks. And that first land that they went to in Valencia, they showed up. Yeah. And I think that was the first time we had seen TSM really bring something to the table and uh, con considered a, a good team or a top team in NA because the Pro League standings currently don't show that. Yeah, they're in second last place right now. They're only just ahead of the Sonics, who they defeated yesterday, but then also defeated in their matchup, uh, you know, a, a month or so back. And we saw TSM at the Allied Minor, and then we saw them at Valencia. Oh, my. And now we see them falling one by one as Ion walks in and just right by the tellers, well, that man is cashing checks. He takes two members of TSM out of the fray and another lion scan will be used to try and hold TSM in place. Yeah, this round is over for me. FaZe Clan just looks like he can't hold them back. They're ready to get this map over with and head to map three. Uh, FaZe Clan, definitely a huge improvement from the last map that we saw um, on attack and defense. I, uh, I think we're about to have a really good series here. Clubhouse could go the distance. Clubhouse is usually always exciting. Plays very similar to the bank in the fact that you can go to basically every single bomb site except for bar and stock, which is just always a fool's errand. Amidst the smoke and the clutter, it's Pojo Man trying his best. There's a frag grenade dropped right on his lap. He does at least have fellow Canadian Jarvis watching, but that's a diffuser successfully planted for FaZe. Yet again, they got window control. A trade coming out as Pojo Man is dusted. Yuna follows. But still, you have such a numbers advantage for FaZe that you can just keep this one rolling. Now it goes even worse. Jarvis, last one left. And my, oh my, this is not a fun situation to be in, not with such low HP. He was a hero on the first map of Consulate, but he won't be here at all. FaZe answered.